Greetings, and welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series. Podcast episodes are available on VHHA.com and on popular podcast hosting apps, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many others. Podcast episodes also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and 8.20 a.m. across Central Virginia, and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. on 93.9 FM in Richmond. Send any questions, comments, or feedback to pcfpodcast at vhha.com. That's pcfpodcast at vhha.com. I'm Will Selden from the VHHA team, and today's installment of the podcast is what we'll call a special friends and family episode, on which we're joined by my fiance, the lovely Kate Hartrick, who's a new nurse on the coronary care unit at Bon Secours St. Mary's Hospital. Kate's been a good sport and taking one for the team by agreeing to do this on her day off, which, full disclosure, was not her idea. So, with that disclaimer, Kate, thanks for agreeing to be my dance partner in life and on my first recording for the PCF podcast. Hey, I'm excited to be here. So, I know the answer to this, but for the benefit of our listeners, tell me what attracted you to nursing, which I know wasn't your initial career plan when you enrolled at JMU, and the path you took to working in healthcare. Throughout my life, I've always had a variety of interests. So, going to JMU, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to study. My ideas ranged from physical therapy to art history. So for my first basically two years there, I was just taking general courses, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then finally, I took a human physiology class in the hopes of becoming a physical therapist. And my professor kept telling the class, you nurses out there need to pay attention because this is very important for what you will be doing. And that's been my favorite class I've ever taken. So I thought, hey, maybe I shouldn't be a physical therapist. Maybe I should be a nurse. So eventually I left JMU because I would have had to extend my stay to get into the nursing program there. I came back home to Richmond and applied and was accepted into the Bon Secours Memorial College of Nursing. That's how it all started. Do you wish you could focus on practicing medicine without all the distractions? Covaris is here to help. As a leader in medical professional liability insurance with more than 45 years experience, Covaris provides insurance protection with data-driven predictive modeling to help you mitigate the risk of claims. By combining insurance protection with risk analytic services, you can reduce distractions and focus on improving clinical, operational, and financial outcomes. Covaris is reinventing what you should expect from your medical professional liability provider. Find out all Covaris can offer you at Covaris.com. That's C-O-V-E-R-Y-S.com. Insurance products issued by Medical Professional Mutual Insurance Company and its insurance subsidiaries, Boston, Massachusetts. When you enrolled in that program, you started working as a nurse tech as well, right? Can you talk about that experience and how that sort of helped out? Yeah, so in the interim, after coming home from JMU and before applying and being accepted into nursing school, I took a nurse assistant class with the Red Cross, which just teaches you how to support the nursing team and how to interact with patients. Then I applied for my first nurse assistant job at St. Mary's and began working on the neuroscience unit there as a nurse assistant, which I I absolutely loved. It really showed that I was in the right field. And then eventually I applied to the coronary care unit, which is now where I'm working as a nurse. So now at St. Mary's, you work on CCU, as you mentioned. Can you talk to us a little bit about what the work of a critical care nurse is and what types of patients you and your teammates work with on CCU? Sure. Well, the types of patients are generally the just acute heart patients. So somebody out in the world has a heart attack and they are brought by an ambulance to the hospital, they would be directly admitted to our floor. We get all types of patients like heart failure patients. We have certain devices that we can support them until we get their medications right or they're stable enough to go to a different part of the hospital. Essentially, it's just any kind of acute cardiac event. That's the type of patients that we see. So our role as critical care nurses is to really just pay attention to the patient, recognize trends, what's going on with their health, and try to get them healthy enough to get off the ICU. <laughs> and as many people know, that the work of frontline healthcare providers can be really challenging. Um, I've seen that firsthand. But 
especially in the midst of a global pandemic that's really altered society at large and the healthcare delivery system. As a new nurse, what's your experience been like coming into your profession in that environment? And then if you don't mind sharing, what's some of the best advice or guidance that that you've gotten from your colleagues to help you through this transition? So it was really interesting going into being a nurse during the pandemic because I already had been in the nursing field in the hospital setting before COVID. So I knew what that was like, but not as a a nurse. What I've been told many times is that the new nurses who are starting, you know, six months ago, now, six months in the future, we are lucky and unlucky in a way. We're lucky because this is kind of all we know. We know bad staffing ratios, super sick patients, just an all-around completely different hospital setting than they were used to. And we're also unlucky because we have bad staffing ratios and super sick patients. But my nurses, in general, they've told me just to try to be as flexible as possible and make sure that we are able to kind of decompress and make sure all of the negative feelings aren't building up inside ourselves. Otherwise, we won't be able to take care of our patients. And on that sort of note, you talk about flexibility. From your vantage point, how would you say the pandemic has changed the healthcare delivery system, even in the two years since you've been involved with CCU? It stretched things thinner, I would say. I don't, I don't know if there's a way that's necessarily improved things, not the moment, at least, but it's, it's made nurses have to work more than they're used to, have to take care of more patients than they're used to. And I think on the patient side of things, it's made the experience of care not necessarily as good because things are stretched so thin and patients are afraid to come to the hospital. So a lot of times, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, the patients that we were getting were more sick than usual because they would wait to come to the hospital until the last minute. So it's really had a pretty significant impact on everyone involved in the hospital system. Well, that's totally understandable. I mean, this global event has definitely changed a lot of things. It's been really hard on a lot of people. And I've seen how difficult it can be. Obviously, I'm not involved in it. But I guess I'd just say to all the listeners out there who have healthcare workers in your life, just do your best to support them because it is it is super hard, but really, really important work as well. Thanks so much for sharing that, Kate. And to learn more about St. Mary's Hospital or Bonsecor Mercy Health and the incredible work they do, please visit bonsecor.com. Uh, and so now that we've tackled some of the formal stuff, I've got a pair of lighthearted questions to give listeners a bit of a sense of who you are beyond the work that you do. And just for fun, since we're newly engaged, let's do this dating game style. You good for that? Perfect. Okay, good. So normally at this point in the podcast, we'd ask our guests to envision a hypothetical scenario where you could anticipate your final day on Earth and then choose your last meal. But this time, since we're going to do a dating game style, I think we should test ourselves, and I'll guess how I think you would respond. You can tell me if I hit the mark, and then you can guess my choice. Does that sound good? Ooh, I'm excited. Okay, good. Me too. So I'll go ahead and and make my guess for what I think your last meal would be, and then you can tell me how spot on I was, because I know that I will be. Um, (laughs) So I'm going to go for a nice... Gosh, this is tough, because... Kate's mom and dad do some really delicious cooking. And so I'm trying to decide between a nice home-cooked meal and there's a couple that come to mind or one of the restaurants that we go to a lot. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some free press to Mekong here. And I think I'm going to go with that. Um, so I would say your last meal would be something from Mekong. <laughs> you know, that's probably my second choice. But I figured... If it's my last meal on earth, I kind of want to be full. And Mekong is delicious, but I get hungry pretty soon afterwards. So I'm going to have to go with shrimp scampi that either one of my parents make because it's very filling and it's extremely delicious. Okay, well, I missed it. But rest (laughs) assured, everyone, rest assured, shrimp scampi was my second choice. And she (laughs) said Mekong was her second choice. So I think we're doing okay so far. All right, Kate, I'll let you guess mine now. Well, I'm going to go with a little medley for you. I think that part of it would be this curry dish that your mom makes with rice and chicken, and I think it's like a green curry paste. I think that would be the main dish. 
but as a supplement, because we all know, actually, maybe we don't all know, but I know how much you love cookout. I think that they should go and get you some sides from cookout, maybe even a little big double burger, just mix it all together. And um, some of the white cheddar cheese bites from cookout, just really pile it all on. Well, as absolutely disgusting as a mental image as that is, I'd probably say you know me better than I know myself because I was going to say the curry dish that my mom makes. So I'll give you a point for that. <laughs> and also, you, you did nail my cookout order, so plus two. <laughs> okay, so let's keep this dating game format for our last question of the podcast. And typically, we ask our guests, if they were stranded on a desert island, what one book, one album, and one movie would they take with them as part of their entertainment survival kit? So I'll go ahead and guess your picks, and then you can tell me your actual picks and guess mine. Sound good? Okay. Okay. So I'll start with the album, which, you know, what a crazy difficult question this is for anyone to answer, let alone someone else. But <laughs> I've been hearing a lot of Taylor Swift's Red album, the re-recorded version, remastered version, and I know that that's super new, and so for that to jump straight to the very top would be a, a big ask, as great as Taylor Swift is. So I'm not going to pick that, but I'm just going to put that on record so that all the <laughs> listeners know that I'm, you know, I'm up to date on Kate's musical taste. But what I am going to say is someone from, or an album from her favorite artist of all time, which is Ed Sheeran. I'll go with Divide, his second most recent album, The Blue okay. One. So that's the album pick. For a book, oh gosh, <laughs> I think I'll go with the first Harry Potter book. Just bringing back the nostalgia and the magic of that whole series. I know you love that series. So I'll go with book number one from Harry Potter. And then movie, again, I mean, favorite movie of all time. It's so tough to pick one. I don't even know what mine's going to be. But um, I think I'll say, oh gosh, something old. I'm going to stick with the nostalgia theme. And I'll go The Little Mermaid. Okay, okay. Interesting choices. Well... You are wrong on all accounts. Nice, nice. Not, <laughs> not too far off the mark. You're definitely, you're in the right vein. So for my favorite album, this was really difficult for me. And you were right with Ed Sheeran. For the record, all of his album names are just common map symbols. So you guessed Divide, but mine is actually Plus, which is his very first album. And really, it's just for the whole the whole nostalgia of it. I think it's such a beautiful album, and it's the album that really made me love him as much as I do. So, okay. plus, fair enough. Fair Ed Sheeran. They say she's in the class A team, stuck in her daydream. Been this way since eighteen, but lately, her face. My favorite book. You didn't have a chance of guessing this. I'm sorry. You just, I mean, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but it is called A Good Year by Peter Mayle. Um, I've heard you talk about it. Okay. So I figured if I'm trapped on a desert island, I want things that are comforting and happy. So plus by Ed Sheeran, super happy, super comforting. A Good Year is a story that is set in the country side of Italy. And it just has beautiful descriptions of what Italy looks like. And it has beautiful descriptions of food and wine. And it's just, it's so lovely. And so I think that if I was trapped on a desert island, I would want to think about Italy. Fair um, enough. Sounds like we got a honeymoon destination too. So <laughs> and my favorite movie, this is really hard for me. I don't think that this is necessarily my favorite movie, but it's definitely up there and it's one that I will always watch, which I think is a good contender. I'm going with the whole nostalgia theme also. It's Anastasia. And that was a movie that when I was a child, every Friday, my family would go to Blockbuster and we would rent a movie. And every single week, apparently, I don't even remember this, I would ask to watch Anastasia. So I think that if... Every week I was okay with watching Anastasia. I think that's a safe bet for being trapped on a desert island and that being the only movie I can watch. Dancing bears, painted wings, things I almost remember. And a song someone sings once upon a distance. 
December. Okay, well, having gone over three, I feel like I've acquitted myself fairly well. I mean, I got the artist right, not the album. I got sort of the genre. I don't know if I can categorize The Little Mermaid and Anastasia as the same genre, but, you know, same sort of vibe, right? Um, yeah. And then I was dead wrong about the book, but, I mean, come on. A good year? What is that? Yeah. Anyway. I wasn't expecting anything. <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to get put on the spot. So, okay. What do you think my favorite book, album, and movie would be that I would take with me on a deserted island? Okay. Book. This one's really difficult. Um, because I'm such a voracious reader. <laughs> because I know how much you love to read. But I'm going to say the third Harry Potter book. I'm going with the whole Harry Potter theme. Just because you guessed that. And so I feel like maybe it's one of your favorites. And the third one's just a classic. So, Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter. Your favorite album, I honestly, I don't know, but I'm going to say a Ben Rector album. And I don't know the name of it, but whatever album Sailboat is on. Okay, okay, fair enough. And then one movie. <laughs> okay, favorite movie, you said you don't even know what your favorite movie is. I'm just going to go with the one that you always claim to be your favorite movie, which is Shawshank Redemption. All right. So you've picked The Prisoner of Azkaban, the Ben Rector album with Sailboat on it. (laughs) Beautiful title. And The Shawshank Redemption. I have good news for you, bad news for me. Uh, I'll give you two and a half points for that out of three. I mean, that was really, really good. So the first Harry Potter book is my favorite. The earlier comment about me being a voracious reader, I hope the listeners out there could hear was dripping in sarcasm. I'm not a voracious reader, but the Harry Potter series is the only series that I remember looking forward to going and sitting down with a book. So definitely something from there. And I think the first one's what kicked off the whole series, obviously. So um, I'm going to go with that one. So that's your half point. As far as album goes, I'm going to give you a full point for this one. And I want to clarify something. So for those people out there listening, this is how well Kate knows me. I didn't (laughs) pick this album for the entirety of the album. I picked it for the song Sailboat that she mentioned because I think it's probably my favorite song. And the reason I say that is for a similar reason that Kate mentioned earlier. And it's that not necessarily that I could go, I could say this is my absolute favorite song. It's just a song that I never skip when it comes on shuffle. I feel just like a sailboat. Don't know where I'm headed, but you can't make the wind blow from a sail. So yeah, the album is called "The Walking In Between," and I had to look that up before this. So wow, well, I would have never gotten yeah, that. I'll give you a full point for that. <laughs> and then finally, my favorite movie. Again, what a tricky, tricky question to answer. But I do always say Shawshank. I'm going <laughs> to stick with that. I hope I can make it across the border. I hope to see my friend and shake his hand. I hope the Pacific is as blue as it has been in my dreams. So I'll give you a full point for that one. So <laughs> I'd say that's two. If we're competing, which we always are, I think <laughs> two and a half points for you. And I'll claim a half point. So... I think you're the official winner of the Patients Come First podcast dating game. So well done, Catherine. Thank you for playing. That brings us to a close of another podcast of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you liked what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. We want to once again thank our guest, Kate Hardrick, a nurse on the coronary ICU at Bon Secours St. Mary's Hospital, for joining us today. Seriously, thanks for doing this, Kate. This was super fun. We should do this more often. (laughs) Sounds good.